Today, a new setting is actually hurting your FPS. Intel's launching Core Ultra Plus. Don't do it AMD, and new desktop APUs could seriously hurt discrete GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Metal. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, PC gamers everywhere need to turn this setting off. Like right now, it's hurting your FPS. So for those who may not know, a little while back, Microsoft announced Copilot for gaming. That's right, more AI crap that no one asked for, but it looks to get even worse. Now, before I talk about this first story, keep in mind that Microsoft just made a statement on this, but it isn't much better and there's actually something even worse in this initial reporting. Either way, the new feature has launched in beta on the game bar in Windows. And as you can see right here, so this is the initial reporting on this, and it says the Gaming Copilot AI is being trained by default using users' screen grabs, performing OCR on the screenshots, and sending the extracted text back to Microsoft servers to train its large language models, all without users being informed of this process. Now, a Reset Era forum member actually discovered this through network traffic analysis noticing that the Gaming Copilot AI app was transmitting data to Microsoft servers without his knowledge. Now, to make matters even worse, if this is the case, it says this occurred while he was testing a game under an NDA. So what's supposedly happening here is that it's taking screenshots and then looking at the text data of the screenshots using OCR and then transmitting this data back to Microsoft. And as they state, this could be a problem because this was a game that was under NDA and technically he may have breached the NDA agreement because of that. Now, like I said, Microsoft has since responded to this. And here's what they say. It says, quote, when you're actively using Gaming Copilot and Game Bar, it can use screenshots of your gameplay to get a better understanding of what's happening in your game and provide you with more helpful responses. These screenshots are not used to train AI models and Gaming Copilot is an optional feature that only has access to gameplay when you're playing a game and actively using it. Okay, so that last part is completely useless. Of course, it's only able to do it when you're actually playing the game and actively using it. I mean, that literally was the problem from the beginning. Now, they state that the screenshots are not used to train AI models, but then it says separately, Gaming Copilot may use its text or voice conversations with players to help train and improve AI. Do you see the problem here? So it states that, no, 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 these screenshots are not used to train AI models. They're just help to get a better understanding of what's happening in your game and provide you with more helpful responses. Therefore, I would assume it would likely respond using this information that it gathers, potentially even specifically referencing it and things like that. But then it says that the text or voice conversations with players are used to help train and improve AI, meaning it can send this information to help train and improve AI. Sort of contradicts itself. I mean, either way, it is definitely using what you're doing to help train and improve AI, or at least what you're discussing in the conversations that you have. And as you can see, it does look like this setting is turned on by default. So yeah, definitely not good. But like I said, it actually gets even worse because according to this article, they actually tested, it says with gaming copilot model training settings turned on, and this is while they're playing dead as disco demo on Steam, they actually noticed that the frame rate often dipped into the 70s, so around high 70 FPS, although it mostly stayed within the 80 to 85 FPS range. But when they then turned it off, so with gaming copilot's model training settings switched off, the game kept within an 84 to 89 FPS range while reaching 90 FPS or more occasionally without any dips into the high 70s range. Meaning we could be looking at upwards of a 5 plus percent FPS loss thanks to Copilot AI. So not only is Microsoft forcing this AI crap on us, they're actively hurting performance at the same time. Like I've said, the reason companies are doing this is to try their best at justifying the absurd amounts of money that they're putting into AI. But this is ridiculous. Needless to say, you definitely want to turn this crap off.
And next up for today, we've been hearing about Intel potentially launching an Arrow Lake refresh for a little while now, which is already disappointing enough. But now they're giving us one annoying naming scheme, Core Ultra Plus. I'm just waiting for the Core Ultra Ti Max Plus Extreme, but in the meantime, we now have the Core Ultra 270K Plus, which was spotted in a Geekbench benchmark. And you can see it's the Core Ultra 7 270K Plus. And I'll get to the scores in just a second, but you'll notice that it comes with 24 cores. Now, rumors have been suggesting that it would have 20 cores, just like the 265K, so this would basically just be a slight upgrade over that, while a Core Ultra 9 to 90K Plus would get the full 24 cores. But... As you can see, like I said, it supposedly comes with 24 cores. Now, these can get the core counts wrong, but essentially there's at least a slight chance that Intel's refresh could ultimately come with an upgrade in core count. But like I said, really not sure about that. Now, it does also, this is another upgrade, it apparently shows a transfer rate of right at 7200 mega transfers per second. And according to video cards, they actually heard that the memory support would get a speed bump to 7200 mega transfers per second. So this, of course, looks to confirm that. Now, it also gets a slightly lower to the 285K frequency of 5.5 gigahertz, which, given the fact that the 265K also got 5.5 gigahertz, that somewhat suggests that the 270K isn't the highest end model here, which, like I said, would be fairly nice, especially just for a refresh. All in all, while the naming scheme is getting a little ridiculous at this point, if they do increase scores, that certainly would be nice, but of course, if they don't, I have no idea what Intel is thinking here. And next up, while talking about terrible naming schemes, if you remember not too long ago, I covered a story originally from Red Gaming Tech where he claimed that AMD was in fact set to use the Ryzen AI naming scheme for their next-gen desktop CPUs. I was obviously hopeful that AMD wouldn't do this, but it really is looking more and more like that is the case. Because while this has already been announced in the past, AMD officially gave us a launch date as well as a price of $12.99. That isn't too important here. Don't forget that this is the Ryzen AI Pro R9700. This is the one that comes with 32 gigs of memory and is certainly set to be pretty impressive, especially at that price point. Don't forget that while yes, Nvidia's RTX 5090 is significantly faster and it does also come with 32 gigabytes, it's also significantly more expensive. So I do you think this price point isn't at least terrible? I mean, all of this really is just way too expensive if you ask me. Regardless, not too bad. The problem is that if you didn't remember this, because it was announced a little while back, they're also tacking on AI into Radeon SKUs as well. Now, this isn't consumer level SKUs, but don't forget that the whole Ryzen AI SKUs all started with consumer Ryzen CPUs made for consumer notebooks. So I definitely argue that this does very much lend credence to these leaks here. Still, hopefully AMD doesn't do it. And I would just say to AMD, there is still time. Please don't. And lastly for today, AMD's finally set to launch new desktop APUs that can seriously game. I'm talking discrete GPUs could be in a little trouble. So for those who didn't see it, I recently went over a new Agisa update that AMD shared with board partners to make their upcoming BIOS updates for their AM5 boards. And in the code, HXL found that Kraken Point was actually in it, meaning AMD was bringing some mobile APUs over to desktop. Think the 8000 G series, though this would obviously be something like 9000 G. But as I mentioned before, Kraken Point isn't all that impressive, and I had said that I highly doubt AMD would release these with just Kraken Point. Well, in a new comment within that thread, a user actually found that code for Strix points is in that Agisa update. And don't forget that companies like ASUS have already confirmed that new APUs are in fact coming to AM5. Basically, AMD is set to launch their high-end APUs on desktop, which will make this one of the biggest upgrades to desktop APUs 
ever. Don't forget that the current gen 8000G series is essentially based off of AMD's Ryzen 7040 series. And because of that, the highest end 8700G only comes with 8 cores and 16 threads for the CPU and up to 12 cores for the iGPU. But the Strix Point APUs get up to 12 cores and 24 threads, albeit those are big dot little cores, so it isn't as big as it sounds. But then it also comes with a very nice 16 CUs on the iGPU. So this is said to be a pretty huge performance jump over current gen APUs. And while the HX370 is already a beast of an APU, it'll be given far more thermal headroom and a desktop form factor. So while that does it for today, what do you think about these APUs? Plus, don't forget to turn off that setting in your PC. And if you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.